Hello everyone, in this video we will learn how to use the Q2 Phylogeny plugin using Galaxy. My name is Mike Robeson and I am an assistant professor at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences in the Department of Biomedical Informatics. Before we proceed, let's revisit what we've done so far. First we've imported our sequences. Second, we've demultiplexed our sequences. Third, we've denoised our sequences. This step produces two outputs, a feature table and representative sequence plot. Subsequently, we perform taxonomic classification and perform some data filtering. In this video, we will continue on by using phylogeny plugin to generate and infer a phylogeny for use in downstream phylogenetic diversity metrics. In Chime, there are two basic ways to construct a phylogeny. One approach outlined here is a reference-based approach, often referred to as fragment insertion. In other words, your amplicon sequences or fragments are mapped against a curated reference alignment and phylogeny. If the representative sequence maps well to this reference set, it will be inserted into the corresponding reference phylogeny. Any that fail to insert will be discarded. Another approach, which we'll be discussing in this video, is the de novo approach as outlined here. In other words, we'll be generating a de novo alignment based on the representative sequences themselves. From here, we'll remove any poorly aligned regions of our alignment by applying a mask. This masked alignment will then be used to infer our phylogeny and then subsequently rooted. More details about these approaches can be found in the Chime 2 documentation as shown here on the tutorials page. Or you can also visit the video on phylogenetic reconstruction. Here you can learn more about some of the basic concepts and approaches to inferring phylogenies. In Chime 2, there are two general ways you can go about making a de novo phylogeny. The first is to run a set of independent commands as outlined here above, where you go from generating an alignment all the way through to producing a rooted tree. You can do the same thing by running a pipeline, which essentially wraps all four of these commands outlined here above. If we look at the flow chart here on the left, what we're doing is taking a feature data sequence type, aligning that sequence to generate a feature data aligned sequence type, after which we perform some quality filtering on the alignment by masking, which also generates a feature data aligned sequence type. From here, this data can be fed into one of several phylogenetic inference tools. These tools often generate an unrooted phylogeny, but in order to be useful for downstream phylogenetically based diversity metrics, they must be rooted. One advantage of running commands independently, for example, this chime phylogeny step, some phylogeny tools provide an awful lot of options to use. By running them manually, you have access to a lot more options than you would if you were to run it in a pipeline. And this is intentional, as the pipeline is meant to run very common tasks in a very easy to use and accessible way. Let's run the Q2 phylogeny plugin using the Galaxy interface. And what we'll do is we'll skip down to the phylogeny plugin, and we are going to make use of the pipeline align to tree mapped fast tree. Again, even though it is a long name, it's telling you that it's going to produce an alignment and return a tree. And it's going to do this by building an alignment using mapped, and the tree will be produced using fast tree. Our file is already here as expected. Can make sure we can look at it, the type, its feature data sequence. There are some options available through this pipeline. We can adjust the number of threads or CPUs that'll be used for this pipeline. And we also provide options for how to mask the alignment. Remember, one of the steps in this pipeline is after the alignment, it's going to mask the alignment before it builds the tree. We'll leave everything as is. I will hide this and we will execute the pipeline. Now, as you can see, there are four outputs that will be generated. 
and they're all being run in order here. We will receive an alignment. We will obtain a mast alignment, a tree, and then finally our rooted tree. Now while that's running, I'm going to go over to the actual tutorial we're running, which is here, the Project Tree Reconstruction. And we're going to make sure our file names are consistent with what's in this tutorial so that we can use these files for all of the other downstream processing we'll be performing within Galaxy. Okay, so all of our files have been produced. And what I'm going to do now is edit these file names. So here is our alignment. And just to make sure, I'll go back to our phylogenetic tree construction tutorial. And we should call these our aligned reference sequences. So, or representative, aligned representative sequences. Um, and I'm going to paste that here. And then save. Then we are going to do the same thing for all of the files. So all I'm doing is making sure we keep our file names consistent. And again, of course, you could check to make sure that you know the uh, feature data aligned sequence. I'm looking at the file. It's calling it mass alignment. But I'm just going to delete that. Oops. Paste. Save. Use this for our rooted, unrooted tree. It's just called tree by the pipeline, but just to be explicit, to make sure what we're, to be clear on what we're working with, we have unrooted tree. And then, of course, we have our rooted tree. Save. Okay. Now we have everything we need. Before we move on, I'd like to highlight a couple of the other pipelines available in Q2 Phylogeny. We just completed running Align to Tree Mapped Fast Tree. But we also have Align to Tree Mapped Raxamil, in which case we use Raxamil in place of Fast Tree to generate the tree. And finally, we have the other pipeline called Align to Tree Mapped IQ Tree, in which case IQ Tree is used instead of Fast Tree. You can also run several of these tools individually. Here's the Raxamel plugin, and here is IQ Tree, and so on. Let's quickly recap what we just ran through in the Galaxy interface. We ran the Align to Tree Mapped Fast Tree Pipeline, which essentially ran these several individual chime commands in order, from making the alignment, masking the alignment, running Fast Tree, and then rooting that tree. Here's an overview of all the other options available to you through the Chime Phylogeny plugin in conjunction with Chime Alignment. You have the mapped alignment, you can mask that alignment, and you have the Chime Phylogeny plugin, which gives you a variety of options for running Fast Tree, Raxamil, and IQ Tree. And of course, we have a pipeline for each of the tree building methods available. This is where I'd like to say, may all your trees be fully resolved or nearly so. There is one more thing I'd like to discuss before we go. Wouldn't it be nice if we can visualize the phylogeny we just inferred? Well, good news, we can. To be clear, this is bonus content that demonstrates the use of Empress via the command line interface. This is because Empress is not currently implemented for use in Galaxy. As such, any of the generated visualizations demonstrated here will not be required in order to follow along throughout the rest of this workshop. Consider this bonus material to try on your own. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. 
Before we continue with the Q2 Empress demonstration via the command line, we will need a set of four files from prior tutorials. From the taxonomic annotation tutorial, we will require the taxonomy QZA file. From the filtering feature tables tutorial, we will need the sample metadata and filter table four files. And from the phylogenetic tree construction tutorial, the rooted tree file. Now there are a couple of ways you can run Empress to generate a tree visualization. The first is the simplest approach you can take, where you can visualize a tree with its taxonomy. The command below, which is the one we'll demonstrate today, you can also add other information, such as your sample metadata and your feature table. Let's see what we can do. As you can see, I've already downloaded all of the files we require to run Empress. I pasted the command here in my terminal. You can see we have our rooted tree, our feature table, our metadata, our taxonomy file. And we're going to write this out as the Empress table taxonomy tree visualization. Now that we have our file, let's visualize it in Chime 2 View. Here is our tree. It's presented currently in an unrooted radial form or a network form. Now you might be asking yourself, well, didn't we use a rooted tree? Yes, we did. But this is just a visualization and it's nice to see an unrooted form because it highlights the natural clustering of the data itself. But we can change the layout such that we can view it as a rectangular view or a circular view. Rectangular view defaults to this descending order. I prefer ascending myself because I like seeing early diverging lineages at the bottom and more recent diverging lineages towards the top. Now, we have our tree here, but what can we do with all this lovely metadata we have? Well, we can take our metadata and map it on to the tree. And in this case, let's color the branches of the tree given our metadata. And what I'm doing is I'm going to color it by auto FMT group. And what you see is we have our two groups here. And I can zoom up a little. And you'll see a lot of our branches are colored yellow and others are colored purple, but some are not colored at all. Why is this? Well, this is because if a feature exists in more than one group, it will not be colored. Features that are colored basically are telling you that they are unique to that group. So if you see a purple line, that feature on the tree is unique to the control group. If you see a yellow line, those features are unique to the treatment group. Well, we can also color not only by sample metadata, but we can color by the feature metadata. In this case, we can color it by taxonomy. And I'll just increase the line width of the colors. Now you can see the branches of the tree are colored based on the phylum level classification I've selected. So now we have two ways that we can color a tree's branches by sample and feature metadata. But let's make a nice pretty tree. So let's go to the layout and make it circular. And let's go and add a bar plot to this. What I'm going to do is use the sample metadata again, like we colored the trees. And hit update. Now you can see 
these colored patterns of the bar plot, which are basically like relative abundance taxonomy bar charts that we've already looked at. Now, to kind of, again, prove to ourselves that those branches that did not have a color before were appeared in two groups, well, we can check that. I'm going to color the branches using the same metadata that we made this bar chart from. And you can see, right, this branch is not colored, but you can tell that it exists in both groups, in the purple and yellow. And you can see some of these features obviously exist more in the treatment group versus control and vice versa. So here we've just proven to ourselves that the uncolored branches indeed do appear in more than one group. Well, we don't need the branches really covered because it'd be kind of redundant. So let's um, remove that. But perhaps we can add another layer, a bar chart layer around this circle. Well, that's easy enough to do. We can come down here and click Add Another Layer. But in this case, let's append that taxonomy again. Maybe we can do three levels of taxonomy. And we can use the same uh, color scheme and hit Update. And let's zoom out a little bit. Oops. And we can actually minimize this if we want with this feature here. So now we have a nice tree, normal circular uh, branch length of our tree here in our relative abundance of our two groups and then our taxonomy coloration. Now what we could do to make it maybe a little bit more pretty with the layout is select ultrametric so that zoomed up pretty, pretty quick. And now we have a nice tree with two bits of metadata. The outer part is our taxonomy. The inner part is our basically our relative abundance of each feature. This concludes our little demo of Empress. Again, this is not required for the rest of the workshop. This is just a nice little bonus feature that we thought would be nice to present to you all. We look forward to all of your amazing Empress visualizations. Feel free to share them with the community on the Chime 2 forum. Until then, remember, there is always a very happy tree behind every Empress visualization.